thank you, children, for that. That was very good. Take your Bible and go back to the book of Luke, chapter 2. Look at verse 15. Book of Luke, chapter 2, and verse 15. We're going to talk about understanding angels. Now, tonight, we're going to talk about what are angels and what do they do. What are angels and what do they do? Uh, Luke, chapter 2, and in verse 15, again, I'll reread it for reiteration's sake. Where the Bible says, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go uh, even unto Bethlehem and see the thing which is to come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Now we understand that these angels were making this known unto the shepherds. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says, Ministering spirits uh, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So we understand angels came from heaven. We understand that angels are ministering spirits. Luke chapter 4 and in verse 9, the Bible says, and he brought, it says, him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. And watch what it says in verse 10. For it is written. Now, by the way, Satan does know the Bible. The Bible says, For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And so we understand that even Satan knew about the angels. We'll see why in a little bit. As we get closer and closer to the return of our Lord, I believe that you will see all sorts of things begin to develop so that you can understand the power of God and, yes, that which is the power of Satan. We understand in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 1, the Bible says, In the last days perilous times shall come. Didn't say they might come, said they shall come. There's four reasons why people are interested or enamored by angels. Four reasons, I believe. Number one, because of the spirit of hopelessness. Because of the spirit of hopelessness. Everybody wants hope. Everybody wants to believe in something that is going to deliver them. All right? And so there's the spirit of hopelessness. So people are looking for answers and for something, if you would please, to fill their empty spirits. They're looking for something. And by the way, if they don't find something, stay with the thought, if they don't find something, they'll grab anything. If they don't find something, they will grab anything. Everybody wants to feel uh, fulfilled. Everybody wants to feel full, all right? And if they can't feel full by grabbing the right thing, then they would try to feel full by grabbing the wrong thing. Therefore, you have people that do angel worship. You know, now what is that? That's not scriptural, but they do it. Now, why do they do that? One of those reasons is because they have a spirit of hopelessness. Okay? Number two, there's the spirit of selfishness. The spirit of selfishness. Christians are called to be servants, but in our society, Christians don't want to serve nowadays. They want to be served. Uh, in our churches, people don't come to serve. By the way, that's why you're supposed to come to church. You're not supposed to come to church to see what you can get out of it. You're supposed to come to church to see what you can put in it. You're not supposed to come to church and just be uh, somebody that is just taking in, taking in, taking in, and become a spiritual couch potato. You're supposed to come to church so that you can give and give and give and give. It's a place of serving Jesus Christ. Okay, and so we understand, however, that angels are ministering spirits, they're ministering servants, and because of that, when people hear that, here's what they say, they say, well, I tell you what, uh, I, I, I want to learn more about angels, and, and, and I want to be able to be uh, one that really, really admires these angels because of the spirit of self Listness, okay? And then there's the spirit of the new age, the spirit of the new age. Uh, you know, we're living in a society now that's being conditioned, I believe, for the end times. And uh, uh, you're seeing the introduction, not the appearance of, nor being known as the Antichrist, but uh, you're seeing things that are being introduced. People today chase more signs and wonders 
than they did 10 years ago. Five years ago. One year ago. People are chasing signs and wonders. Now, what is that? That's the spirit of the new age. All right? Then there's the spirit of curiosity. Some people become enamored by uh, angels because of the spirit of curiosity. They just want to know the unknown. Now, by the way, let me help you a little bit. God has given you a Bible, and everything that is in that Bible, God wants you to know. The things that you're supposed to obey to do, God wants you to obey to do. But if something is not written in the Bible for you to know, then God has a purpose for that too. There is no spiritual significance to the knot holes in Noah's Ark. So if there's no spiritual significance to the knot holes in Noah's Ark, then why waste time to study it? See, the Bible says that we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved. Is that right? All right, so I'm supposed to study. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine, first off. Okay? And so I'm supposed to study. Uh, children are past uh, a throne, the Bible says, uh, to and throw uh, by every, or to and throw by every wind of doctrine. Now, why is that? Why are they blown about uh, by a wind, if you will, by every wind of doctrine? I'll tell you why, because they don't know doctrine. All right, and when we know doctrine, then we will be able to make doctrinal decisions. Over in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4, the Bible says that uh, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Okay, and that's talking about how the dragon did that. Now, that's a picture of Lucifer. Over 300 times in your Bible does the Bible teach about angels that aid and help the saints. So over 300 times in your Bible, you will see uh, that which is an angel or a collection of angels that are gathered to be able to aid and to be able to help the saints. God provides, if you will please, angelic protection to children. Let's get into our Bible study a little bit. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10. The Bible says, says, Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that, it, that in heaven uh, there are angels. In heaven, they're, who's, who's angels? They're angels. So children do have angels, protective angels. You say, well, I always heard about that. I just don't know if it was true. Well, there you go. Now you know it's true. Okay, uh, the Bible says that these little ones, for I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So uh, why has God given us angels? Well, we understand this, that angels were given because they are ministers of that which is the heirs of salvation. So they're ministers to God's children. They're ministers to those that believe. There are ministers to the saints. What's ministers mean? Uh, that, that word did not originate in a Methodist church, by the way. It originated in your Bible. Ministers. What does it mean? It means that they are servants. Yeah, Brother Palmore, I never will forget it. I never will forget it. As long as I live, I will never forget it. And uh, we were down, I think it was the VA hospital, if I remember correctly. It was the VA hospital. I remember, VA hospital, and we're down there, and I pass out tracks a lot. And so I saw all these people sitting over there in the waiting room. And so I went over there, and I started to pass out tracks. And uh, this one lady seemed kind of keenly interested. And so I knelt down and uh, began to show her how to be saved. And uh, the policeman came. And they, you know, they thought I was doing something bad, I guess, you know, and they started circling on the interior of that room. Now, these were undercover policemen, and, and I guess they thought that maybe I was a hood or something. I don't know. Uh, uh, he may look like a hood. I didn't think I looked like a hood. But, uh, but, but so, so, you know, and so, uh, you know, he saw that they were kind of antsy. You know, because here I am, I'm going around kneeling down with all these people, you know. And so uh, Brother Palmer went over and in his uh, very, very unique way, uh, he stilled, their, stilled them a little bit. And he said, now look, he said, we're ministers. And we've come to pray with these people because they have burdens. Well, I think anybody's burdened about going to hell needs prayer, amen? amen. 
And so, and, and, and boy, you know, those guys backed off and I didn't get shot. And I'm so thankful. I, I didn't get thrown in jail or anything. I was just, I did, I, I've never had a desire to start a personal jail ministry from the inside. And so I, I, I praise God for that. Now, definition in terms. Uh, the word angel means this. It means a deputy, a deputy. So angel is talking about a deputy, all right? It's a messenger, uh, specifically, if you would please, sent by God. He's a representative of God himself, all right? Now, he's also, a, a, he's also the ministering spirits, ministering spirits. And you'll see this, ministering spirits. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says, and, uh, and are they not all ministering spirits? It says, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. All right, so they've come to do what? Minister, minister. They've come to serve. That's what that means. All right, by the way, you'll find that the Apostle Paul said that he was a servant. You'll find that James said that he was a servant. You'll find that uh, different ones of the disciples, they said a servant of Jesus Christ. It, you know, and you and I are called to be servants. Our Lord Jesus fashioned himself as a servant all right? And so you and I are supposed to be servants, all right? And so we understand that angels, even, even those of the highest order, are employed by the Creator to serve those who serve, who believe and serve Jesus Christ, all right? So, so they are working for God on your behalf. Angels are working for God on your behalf, okay? And you can get excited about that if you want to, okay? Uh, but uh, uh, what, what these services include, we'll see in just a little bit, how God has put them in certain places. Now, now I'm going to show you about angels tonight. They have extraordinary power to be able to help us in ex with extraordinary problems. Uh, statement number one, uh, great numbers, great numbers. Let's look at that, great numbers. There's many, many Hundreds of thousands of angels, all right? Great numbers as depicted, yea, described in your Bible. Uh, you'll see that the, 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 devil, uh, would, uh, uh, the devil would have us to believe uh, that we're all alone. You're not alone. When you sleep in your room at night, you're, there, there's, there's angels that are abiding by. Do you understand that? You know, when you say, well, I tell you what, you know, my, my little child, my little child, I'm, I'm worried about my little child going to the mission field. Well, don't you think they'd be safer under the protection of God in the will of God than out of the will of God and not under the protection of God? Okay, all, all right. Now, and so they have extraordinary powers. Okay, they have, statement number one, great powers. And, and the devil doesn't want us to believe that. He wants us to believe that we're all alone. In 2 Kings chapter 6 and verses 14 through 17, one of my favorite, favorite uh, uh, Bible recordings here is the fact that there's the passage about the servant of Elisha. The servant Elisha was scared. He saw a great host of the Assyrian armies that was gathered together. And you remember how, uh, how the man of God had insight that the Assyrians was going to attack the Israelites. He gave them warning. Now the Assyrian uh, leader, along with the Assyrian army, had decided we're going to go get even with that man of God. We're, we're going to go get him. We're going to get even. And, and the Bible talks about how that Elisha prayed, and he said, Lord, I pray thee, open uh, his eyes that he may see. And the Bible says that when he opened his eyes, that young man saw that the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Okay? Now, wait a minute. Uh, there is protection that God gives his children. Now, stay with me a little bit. Uh, I believe this. I believe that when you're serving Jesus Christ, I believe when you're giving Jesus Christ your very best, I believe that God will and can protect you. Now, sometimes it's God's will. Now, don't, don't get mixed up about this. Sometimes it's God's will that he calls home one of his saints for his honor and for his glory. That's why we have to be totally surrendered to the Lord. That doesn't mean that you ought to be foolish and the things you do. Well, preacher, I believe God's going to protect me, so I'm going to step out in front of a Mack truck. No, that's an act of foolishness. That Mack truck is going to run you over and think nothing about it. You don't need to be a grease spot for Jesus. You need to be a light for Jesus. 
all right? And so there's other incidences in the Bible where angels are seen in the Bible. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 11, the Bible talks about that there's the number of which is 10,000 times 10,000. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 11, the Bible says, and, and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and, and the beast and uh, the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And so you see that God specifically puts a number on them. Uh, in Hebrews chapter uh, 12 and verse 22, the Bible speaks that they're innumerable, innumerable. Okay, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, the Bible says, But ye, it says, are, are come unto Mount Zion, the Bible says, and unto the city of the living God, and the heavenly Jerusalem, and it says, and to an innumerable company of angels. So there's so many of them that they were not numbered at that time. So God is not going to run out of angels. Okay, so they have great numbers. Statement number two, they have great speed, great speed. Angels have great speed, okay? Uh, angels are able to move very, very quickly. They're able to be able to rescue very quickly or do whatever they need to do very quickly. Uh, he, uh, the book of Luke, chapter 10 and verse 18, the Bible talks about how, uh, how we see here that uh, it talks about uh, that which is uh, Satan. And it says, beheld Satan as a lightning fall from heaven. Light we, we were heading home the other night. Remember we had that bad storm? We had a bad storm. We live in Forney, uh, and uh, we're heading home. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, no, it was I don't know if we're heading home from church or where, but we were coming home somewhere. And uh, my wife was with me, and we were riding along. And uh, right beside us, on the left, was a huge mammoth. What? Uh, I'm just talking about a, a just lightning. It just boom, like, as the closest I've ever been to lightning uh, in my in my in my life. Closest I've ever been. I had to come to Texas just to get close to lightning. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, it's funny. I preached a, uh, a meeting in, 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 in another state. And I preached a meeting in another state, and they advertised, come here, Dr. Wells. He's the Tennessee tornado. And I thought, I'm not from Tennessee. What, where am I? Uh, I'm from Texas, you know. And, uh, well, anyway... And so great speed, great speed, okay? Uh, you know, uh, so, so we, we know that, that heaven is light years away. Now, understand this. We know that heaven is light years away, and yet Satan is able to appear as light from someplace, if you would please, as he would go, I believe, before, as you will see later in our Bible study. Remember how he appeared before the Lord? Remember how he appeared before the Lord and he would uh, talk to the Lord about Job and, uh, and uh, God said, you can't kill him. You just can't kill him. All right? Now, understand this. So Lucifer, being one of the angelic beings, shows the speed in which angels can travel and it's no, no matter for what purpose. Matter of fact, over in the book of, this is neat, you'll see this. Over in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verses uh, 12 and 13, you'll see that an angel was 21 days late to be able to minister to Daniel, and he apologized. He apologized for being late. He's 21 days late. Okay? So angels do understand time. You know, it's very obvious that God assigns his angels to specific jobs. It's very obvious that God uh, sends his angels for specific help to specific people, all right? And they have great speed in being able to do that. Then you see statement number three, there's great knowledge. There's great knowledge. Uh, second uh, Samuel chapter 14, verse 20, the Bible says, and the Lord is wise concerning the wisdom of an angel of God, says to know all things that are in, watch, what the, watch it now, that are in the earth. Specifically, that are in the earth. All right? And so we understand that angels, although very intelligent, they do not possess all knowledge. Now, they know all things in the earth. Didn't say nothing about heaven. Didn't say anything about the heavens. Talked about the earth. God specifically puts things in the Bible to make us to understand specifics. All right? So angels, although they're very intelligent, 
They do not possess all knowledge. Matter of fact, in Mark chapter 13 and verse 32, the Bible talks about the coming of the Lord, and it makes it very clear that the angels don't even know the coming of the Lord. Now, why? That's not in earth. That's above the earth. That's from heaven. All right? The Bible says in Mark chapter uh, 13 and verse 32, the Bible says, but of uh, that day, the Bible says, uh, and that hour knoweth no man, no, now watch what it says, no, not the angels which are in heaven. So the angels don't even know when the Lord's going to return. They have no idea when the Lord's going to return. Now, the Bible says that they know all things. Where? In the earth. But they don't know all things in heaven. So they know all things in the earth, which means that they're very familiar with the prince and powers of that which is the air, which is in the earth. All right, statement number next. Here it is. And uh, that is this. There's great power. There's great power. I said number one, great numbers. Number two, great speed. Number three, great knowledge. Number four, great power. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35, the Bible says, one angel slew 185,000 Assyrians. 185,000 Assyrians. Now, how did that happen? Watch what it says. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35, the Bible says, it came to pass, it says, that night, then an angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp. So the angel came down in the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So some are arising, and what do they find? They find nothing but dead corpses all around them, 185,000 of them. And now wait a minute, wait a minute. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord, how many? The angel of the, how many? The angel of the Lord. So one angel killed 185,000 people. So I'm telling you, it's good to have an angel on your side. All right, 2 Kings chapter 24, verses uh, 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 15 through 16. The Bible talks about how 70,000 men were slain. It says, from uh, that which is uh, a, a disease, uh, uh, that which is uh, a torment that was given by an angel. So the pestilence that came, the disease that came, was given by an angel. All right, we understand this. Over in Acts chapter 12 and verse 32, or 23, the Bible says Herod was smitten by the angel of the Lord and died. You mean an angel of God could be, now wait a minute, wait a minute, stay with me now. You mean to tell me, preacher, you mean to tell me that God could give his angel the power to kill somebody on earth? You mean to tell me that God could say, okay, I want that one dead. You mean to tell me that God could send out, if you would please, a hit man. <laughs> That's an angel. To knock somebody off. Well, the Bible says that Herod was smitten by an angel of the Lord and died. Died. Now, okay, let me help you a little bit because we worked all day and we're just downright tired. I know it. I see people praying. And uh, now, now, wait a minute. Can, let, me, let me get your blood running just a little bit. Let me help you out just a little bit, a little bit, okay? God can send an angel to open the doors of a prison. God can send an angel to smite somebody. God can send an angel to kill 185,000 Assyrians. God. Do you understand who we're talking about? We're talking about God. So, so you know, these Christians say, well, i tell you what, I can't live for God. After all, we've got so much opposition out there. I'm just afraid. Oh, what are you talking about? You've got all of that which is at heaven's disposal if you'll simply obey God. The problem, we got a bunch of panty waist Christians that don't obey God. They say, well, I tell you what, I can't go soul winning because I might get in trouble. Go get in trouble. If you get in trouble obeying God, God is going to bail you out. You say, what if he chooses not to? Then you would have got in trouble anyway. Come on. 
Well, I can't give somebody a soul winning plan of salvation because if I do, they'll get mad at me. Well, you take and give them the soul winning plan of salvation and you let them get mad at you, but you do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Don't, don't get upset at God. Amen. Well, I'm just afraid. I'm just afraid. I'm just afraid. Somebody's going to kill me. Okay. So what are they doing? They're threatening you with heaven. Hello. Uh, I was talking to a preacher. Uh, I think this was just boldness. That's uh, just boldness. I was talking to a preacher, and he said a guy came in the back door, pulled a gun in church. He looked at that guy and said, all right, you got one shot. And if you mess up, you're a goner because I'm going to make you eat that thing. He said, the guy said, and left. He said, preacher, would you do that? I'd say, look, you got one shot. If you miss, my wife's going to make you eat that thing. <laughs> but can I tell you, listen to me. Do, do you realize, I think man fears way too much. I think we fear way too much. I think we ought to be like a Daniel in a lion's den. I do. I think you ought to be like a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abimelech in the burning fiery furnace. I think you ought to be somebody that takes your faith and uses it to the degree that God expects you to use it. Watch this. There's great power. And uh, we see this. And I'm getting ready to close. Uh, we see that Herod was smitten by an angel. Well, let me give you the Bible verse. Uh, Acts chapter 12 and verse 23, the Bible says, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. It says, because he gave, listen to it now, because he gave not God the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Now, watch the order. First, he was eaten with worms. Then he gave up the ghost. That's not a good way to go. How did he die, worms? Statement number next. Uh, angels have power over human laws. Angels have power over human laws. So I want to agree with some of the laws that are being made. Well, God's not done yet. God said, no, I'm mad about this. God's not done yet. God hadn't rolled over and played dead. He knows exactly what's going on. All right. Uh, angels uh, entered and un un unlocked, the, unlocked, the, uh, and locked the, uh, unlocked the prison, if you will, please, and delivered, entered into the prison, a locked prison, and unlocked Peter and set him free. Uh, Acts chapter 12 and verse 7, the Bible says, And behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him, the Bible says, and, and a light shined, it says, uh, in the prison, and he smote uh, Peter on the side. Now, Peter wasn't worried. He's snoring. Oh, you know, Peter, poor Peter, thrown in prison. He's snoring. He's dreaming of, I don't know, corn butter or something. I don't know. Cracker barrel food. I don't know. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, says his chains fell off from his hands. All right? And so, uh, you know, these angels have the power to be able to go into locked prisons and to deliver. Okay? Oh, you say, I don't believe that. Well, I do. All right? Angels can open prison doors. Acts chapter 5 and in verse 19. Acts chapter 5, and in verse 19, you say, I don't believe. Now, all this was many, many years ago. By the way, uh, you ought to hear some of the stories I've heard from some of the older men that fought in World War II. You ought to hear some of the uh, stories that I hear uh, about people being delivered on mission fields. Oh, yeah, God is very much still alive. Thank you. Uh, Acts chapter 5 and verse 19, the Bible says, And the angel of the Lord by night opened, it says, the prison doors, and brought them forth and said... Okay, one uh, last one here. Listen to this. Angels can descend, can ascend. Angels can ascend. Angels can ascend in a flame. They can ascend in a flame. Now, you think about this, okay? Uh, here we have Manoah. Now, here is, this is uh, after telling Manoah that, uh, uh, about the, the, the child, Samson. You'll see that an angel walked into the fire and went up with the flame. 
The Bible says in Judges chapter 13, verse 19, so Manoah, it says, uh, took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon the rock unto the Lord. And the angel did, it says, wonderfully, and Manoah and his wife looked on. Now, wait a minute, watch this. In verse 20, same chapter, Judges 13. The Bible says, it came to pass uh, when the flame was gone up into heaven from the altar, then an angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah, it says, and his wife looked on and fell on their faces to the ground. All right, so they had the ability to be able to go into the flame. Now, can I tell you, that means that no matter when you find yourself on the hot seat, the, the Lord can help you. No matter when you find yourself going into the flame, the Lord can help you. Amen. He is the Lord thy God, Amen. and he can help you. Now, one of the ways, one of the ways, as I close, one of the ways is that he will send ministering angels, servants. Servants. We'll study more about it. Father, bless we pray.